There are so many misconceptions about who we are and where we come from. Either delusions of grandeur from the beginning, like we were just so remarkable to start off with, and actually that's not the case. <laughs> or the idea that we were in a fantastical world with many, many species, like Lord of the Rings. I think most people don't imagine that. Most people do think of that march of progress image, and actually that's it's not just incorrect, it's actually less interesting than the real story. Human is the story of us. It's the story of how we began as a species in a moment when we have had a ancient DNA revolution. 2010 is when the uh, genome of Neanderthals was published. Um, and since then we have discovered so many things, including that Neanderthals and ourselves did interbreed, but also new species of human. The Denisovans, Homo ledi, a few other species as well. So really, this has been a very, very important decade or two um, in paleoanthropology. So it feels like the time to make a series on this. I've worked with a lot of really great teams. You suddenly realize when you're working with the best and you're like, Oh, this is how you make a landmark. There are these two components to the show that are brilliant. Um, one is that we have drama, and all of us were terrified about this, because usually when you have drama on a paleo show, it's awful, it's like really bad prosthetics, really bad acting, etc., etc. So the team decided that they were gonna have it, so it felt like more an impression, and they did a six-week shoot in South Africa to represent 300,000 years of human history across seven continents. And then there's photogrammetry. And it's basically hyper real, really very scientifically robust model of human species other than ourselves. It had hundreds of cameras around a model. Um, they had to bring in like, intimacy coordinators. It was just absolutely fascinating to get those models. So there's all of these components um, to tell our story that are so, so important. And it's super cool to be a component of that. The front has a natural slit for a mouth and a natural depression for an eye. And even if you want to go that far, a nostril up at the front. This was a cave. The minute you walk in, there's this clear, very huge rock formation. And you can see why they thought that it was a snake. The overall form has been altered to make it look even more snake-like. There are over 300 indentations that have been ground into the surface over what is obviously an extended period of time. And then they leave these incredible artifacts, but they're unused, but they've been burnt or broken. The obvious interpretation to that is that it's an offering. And it's the first site that we have where it gets really, really difficult to see anything other than ritual there. It is religion, but guess what? Ritual is also Burning Man, it's also your birthday, it's also um, New Year's Eve, it's all of these other things, and we as a species are obsessed with it. We had always had the impression that this type of abstract thinking would have been beyond uh, the, the ancestors at that time, and now we definitely have evidence that that was absolutely wrong. There is something really moving, actually, about being there. Um, because you can see the effort they went through to, to make those arrowheads and to make the snake. I mean, that's a lot of work. Even the early Homo sapiens might not have been doing that. In fact, they probably weren't doing stuff to that extent. So it also represents a shift in the way we see things. Um, in the show, we, we kind of describe it as seeing beyond what's in front of us and that being one of the features of us. It speaks to something deeper as to who we are. We can't speak to these people, but this, this whole place, it gets us so much closer to what they were thinking, what was going on inside. Yeah. This fossil went from being enigmatic and a, basically a mystery to being one of the most important fossils in our whole field. Those fossils have been around for a really long time. And 
Nobody's been sure what they are. It was, a, it was a weird mosaic, like mixture of features. And then really recently, they did the dates on them, but in a way that was much more robust. And they realized that they were actually 300,000 years old. And suddenly it made sense because we thought we were 200,000 years old. And that's why that particular skull didn't make sense because it didn't fit into the timeline, etc., etc. Suddenly, if you say it's 300,000 years old, you go, Ah, that was one of the earliest Homo sapiens. And what's particularly remarkable about that, Morocco. If we'd have made this show 10 years ago, if I suggested we go to Morocco, we'd be like, you're trying to get a holiday. <laughs> like, why are we going to Morocco? Um, but now, suddenly we understood that our origins as a species was a pan-African process that involved, yep, all the way to the north in Morocco and all the way to the south, all these different populations of, of very, very early Homo sapiens interacting. It's a bit like having a peek behind the curtain of evolution. This is a stage in the journey to becoming us. I'm desperate to bring the human into human evolution. If people walk away from the series realising how absolutely fascinating our origins are, and if they walk away realizing that it's their story, that these are their ancestors, this is the who do you think you are, but not just for me and you and some of you watching, that who do you think you are of every single person living today, that would be kind of amazing.